So we've said before that transition metal complexes are often colored, but let's talk about why color happens. So if I have two orbitals, and one orbital has one electron in it, then if my photon comes in, here's a photon. If the photon is of an energy of this difference, so this is my energy difference. So if the photon has higher energy than E, then that electron can get excited to this orbital here. And then we, this electron goes up here. And then so now we've absorbed that photon. And that electron, electron is now at that higher energy. So this is a very simplistic picture, like electron getting excited to a higher energy orbital. Um, there are other nuances to this. So there could be spin involved or outside electron processes. Um, we won't get to that in this class. But for now, this is kind of our simplest picture. One electron goes to a higher energy orbital. As long as your photon can like, you know, match that energy, then we can excite it. If the photon is lower than that energy, then you can't get the electron up there. So it's all energy dependent. And this, what energy that photon that gets absorbed is, is what dictates the color of your compound. So for example, let's say a lot of main group compounds, main group, you know, like organic compounds, alkanes and stuff. What we're talking about is our HOMO is going to be some sort of sigma bond. Your electron here. And then your empty orbital will be your, your sigma star, which I'll draw kind of up here. Well, pink is really dying. So you know, pink is our sigma star. And then so this energy is very big. So big energy gap. So you need a really high powered photon to get that to go. So you know, high photon energy is often, like it won't absorb any invisible photons, which are lower energy than like UV, for example. And so often these compounds are colorless. No visible photons absorbed. Too low energy. The visible photons are lower energy than this gap. Absorbed. If we have a more conjugated system, we talked before about, let's say, pi, pi conjugated aromatic systems that are very delocalized, then our HOMO might be in the pi, then our LUMO might be in the pi star. And then so the more conjugated you are, the, the smaller the gap. And then so maybe we might have more visible photons. So this, this might be colored, right? So a lot of dyes are conjugated systems. OK. So well, let's talk about transition metal complexes. Um, let's see. Let me quickly erase that. I don't like this. So for transition metal complexes, if you have a kind of a middling D count, if you're D1 through D9, then our HOMO and our LUMO are going to be in that D orbital splitting diagon that we talked about. So example, let's say titanium 3 plus compounds. So these are all D1. So depending on what your delta O is, delta O dictates color. So let's say, so we have the same configuration for all these. Any, D, any titanium 3 complex that's octahedral is going to have this configuration, right? But then depending on what ligand you have is, then you're going to have your different delta O, right? So we're keeping all, all things the same oxidation state, same metal, just chain of ligands. So if we go, let's say, from titanium hexafluoride to titanium hexa-aqua, and then maybe hexacyanotitanium, this is 3 minus. So what we've changed our ligands, and you can see I've ordered it going across the spectrochemical series. So fluorine is a pi donor. It's a weak field ligand. Water is sigma only. And then cyanide is a pi acceptor, so this is a strong field ligand. So as a result, even though our configuration is the same, our delta O increases going across, goes up as we go across. And then so if we look at the wavelength at which this color absorbs, so light comes in, this electron in the T2G orbital can get excited right, to the EG set. That's light absorption for these titanium-3 complexes. So 
as we go across, the bigger your delta O is, the higher energy that photon must be to get absorbed. And then so if we see what these spectra look like, we see one band. So you've taken a UV vis spectra before. We have absorbance, and then we have our wavelength. So it's this is the energy component, right? So because we know uh, energy equals hc over lambda, right? So the higher energy you are, the lower wavelength you are, and then the, lo the lower energy you are, the higher wavelength you are. So if we want to do a different axis, so wavelength goes this way, energy would go this way. But keep in mind, so again, it's the position of the peak. So as we, our photon comes in, excites that electron across, then we'll get a peak like so. And then so this is your energy, and this will be your wavelength. So it's the x-axis peak position that tells you what your delta O is. The absorption is an intensity of absorption, which we'll talk about in the next video. But y-axis is not the important, y-axis is not the energy component in an absorption spectrum. This is the x-axis. So this is a critical part. So as we measure the absorption spectra of these three different complexes, what we see on the x-axis, again, is that this is 590 nanometers. This is 510 nanometers. And then this is 450 nanometers. So again, what we see is that the, the x-axis position of your absorption peak goes to lower wavelength and higher energy as delta O increases. Right? So again, this goes to smaller wavelength, higher energy, because we're going from here for the fluoride to here for the hexacyano. So if you want a conversion, we can convert to wave number, or we can convert to EV by dividing by 1240 by the wavelength, for example. Okay. And then so this excess position, the energy, also tells you what color it is, because this is what the energy of photon that light absorbs. So keep in mind that what you see is what the photons that are not absorbed. So if this absorbs 590, which is red photon, what we'll see is that this color is going to be violet blue. 510 nanometers is a green photon, so we're absorbing kind of green, so we'll see the complementary color, what's, what's remaining. So this is about violet red. And then 450 is a blue photon, so if it absorbs blue, we see red. So overall, this is kind of orange red. So uh, that's color. Um, so again, the key thing to keep in mind, don't get confused. Color is not the y-axis of absorption. It's the x-axis. This is the energy, and this is what we see when we're trying to think about delta O. Okay. And let me put a note. More complicated for multi-electron complexes due to spin or electron-electron repulsion. I'll show an example of this in class. Um, but uh, for our purposes, we're just mostly just going to think about how color relates to delta O for DD transitions. So this is called, because these are D orbitals to D, this is a DD transition. This is kind of the, the basics of what we need to know. Like delta O dictates what color we see. Okay.